Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And it's actually the first official video of 2024. And you know what? We should all feel extremely proud of ourselves for surviving 2023. And whatever surviving means to you, whether you're continuing your operations or shutting them down. But for those of us who are still in the game or are looking to rejoin the game at a later date, we all have just one question on our mind. What does 2024 have in store for us? Now, if we take away all the blah blah, we are left with three main factors that can really make or break our particular industry. Number one is the demand for services and goods, which translates into freight volumes on our side. Number two is the amount of trucks on the road, which translates into how much competition do we have. And that, of course, has an effect on rate fluctuations. And number three is diesel prices. So let's chat about it. Ready? Let's go. So on the volume side, many of you have been hearing me say that volumes are actually pretty resilient or were pretty resilient in 2023. And this is partially because the U.S. consumer has been extremely resilient throughout 2023, which I think was a shock to us all. But what about this year? Well, according to JP Morgan, and I quote, there are numerous reasons to expect consumer spending growth to slow next year from its firm pace in 2023. Diminished excess savings, plateauing wage gains, low savings rates, and less pent-up demand. They also say less hiring activity could be enough to cause the unemployment rate to tick up to the mid 4% area by the end of 2024. The good news is that a decrease in consumer spending, whether it be because there are no more savings to tap into to buy things or because there is a higher unemployment rate, all of that should have a positive effect eventually on inflation. The not so great news, of course, for us is that if consumer spending decreases, of course, that means that volumes are going to decrease. In other words, on the trucking side, the demand and will slow down. Remember, in order for rates to start recovering, we want the demand side of the equation to outweigh the supply of trucks. But regardless, even if volumes do start slowing down in 2024, it all depends on what is happening with capacity. So let's chat about it. Well, according to ACT research, and I quote, the surprising strength in the economy in 2023 may provide less stable for freight in 2024. But supply contraction should propel the cycle forward in 2024, even if the broad economy slows. So what do the numbers say, right? I like numbers. They don't lie for the most part. I looked up on Sonar the net changes in trucking authorities. And you have to remember that Sonar gets its data directly from the FMCSA. So what did I find? Well, as I said before, every week in 2023, we have seen a net negative change in authorities, meaning that more people left then came into the industry. What was the total amount of carriers lost in 2023? Well, it was 25,646 authorities lost net and 1,194 of those were just as of December 24th. So we don't even have the last week's numbers. Now, while this sounds hopeful, it's such a big number because we have to remember this is just the amount of authorities. No one knows how many trucks are under each authority. Sounds like a great number, as horrible as that sounds, but for clarity, let me read you off some other numbers that I calculated. In 2020, the net increase in carriers, because there were more carriers who came in than left, was 32,233 carriers. In 2021, the net increase in carriers was 77,445 carriers. In 2022, the net increase was 17,700 12 carriers. So from the start of 2020 until the end of 2022, we have seen a net increase in authorities of 127,000 390 carriers and God knows how many trucks each of those authorities actually had operating. Then in 2023, we lost a total of 25,646 carriers. So now we have a situation where load volumes are similar to mid 2020 levels. However, there are around 102,000 
extra authorities compared to that time. But we have to remember that contract carriers have been weathering the storm of 2023 and 2022 relatively better than those spot carriers. And this is all because of contract rates. Now, if theory proves to be fact, we should start seeing contract carriers get squeezed on their contract rates as shippers start or continue renegotiating those rates to reflect the current market more accurately. And as those contract renegotiations happen and those rates are renegotiated to lower rates, of course, in theory, we should start seeing more downsizing and possibly more authority shutdowns. So no matter where you look right now, if you're looking up what's in store for 2024, you're going to see in pretty much every article that quarter two of 2024 is going to be the turning point. So where is all this chatter coming from, considering the fact that consumer spending is going to slow down and carriers, even though they're leaving, we already saw that we still have an excess of 102,000 carriers compared to 2020. Well, it's all pretty simple. Quarter two is between April and June, the end of June. And this is also known as produce season when usually demand for trucks picks up. According to DAT, and I quote, the trucking market cycle is bottoming out as carriers continue to exit the industry. However, without any significant change in truckload demand expected before the second quarter of 2024, proto season, the market may remain in its current state for quite some time, likely until at least midway through 2024. This whole idea that the market is going to start turning in the middle of this year comes from the fact that if carriers continue being squeezed out by the horrible rates and the really high expenses, and at the same time in quarter two, this is when demand starts picking up, this should all result in better rates. But again, this is all based on the assumption that carriers are continuing to exit the market at an even more rapid pace than we have seen. But something to remember, and this is a common misconception, the market balancing out is not the same thing as the market returning to 2021 levels. The rates we saw back then are not likely to repeat anytime soon unless there is some crazy catalyst that creates another volume boom. And of course, even if the market reaches equilibrium where it's not too great, but not too shabby either, survivable, we have one more factor to consider, which is a very big factor, and that is diesel prices. Diesel prices have been a pain in all of our butts for the past two years almost, because this is the highest expense of any trucking company, and those elevated expenses are eating away at the little profit that we can sometimes scrape together. Now, since September 21st of 2023, diesel prices have started going down and are currently, as of today, at an average of $4.01 per gallon across the nation. But what about the future? Well, according to GasBuddy, it is predicted that diesel will continue falling incrementally this year in 2024 and peaking at $4.13 per gallon in March of 2024. So yeah, there are definitely a lot of intertwined and moving pieces that can affect how 2024 actually pans out for the trucking industry. And every detail counts. Let's say that the only thing that changes is fuel prices that start going down. Well, that affects the consumer as well. If they're not spending as much money to put gas in their car, they have more money freed up to shop and that increases volumes for the trucking industry. But for now, the theory is that by mid 2024, we should start seeing some balance, which is very different from crazy high rates. But hey, balance is much better than turmoil, right? Here's hoping for a little bit more predictability in the coming months. Anyway, guys, wishing you all an awesome rest of your week and I'll see you in the next video.